It's time for Supply Chain Now. Broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Heard around the world, Supply Chain Now spotlights the best in all things supply chain. The people, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. And now, here are your hosts. Hey, good afternoon. Scott Luton and Greg White back with you here on Supply Chain Now. Welcome to today's episode. Greg, how you doing? I am doing great. We are a great ex- week and day, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we're up to now. <laughs> We've got a great conversation teed up. Uh, we'll introduce our guests momentarily, but today's episode, we're continuing our Logistics with Purpose series, powered by our dear friends over at Vector Global Logistics. And this show, Greg, is all about folks that are changing the world in some way, shape, or form, you know? Yeah. Uh, and quickly, it's become one of our favorite series, right? There's been some really endearing and some invigorating stories come out of this. So I think this episode is going to continue in that regard. So with no further ado, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Quick programming note, if you enjoyed today's episode, do check us out wherever you get your podcast from, um, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. All right, so Greg, let's dive right in. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. welcome in our, our esteemed co-host for today's segment, uh, Valeria Hernandez with Vector. Hello, Valeria. How you doing? Hello. I'm doing well. Thank you. Hey, great. Thank you. Great to see you. I really have enjoyed our, our warm-up conversation. And, of course, we're big fans of what Vector does, so especially our work together on this series. Now, Valeria Gregg has brought a special guest to today's show. Uh, we have got Melanie York, Export Manager with White House and Shapiro. Melanie, how you doing? I'm well. I'm doing well. A little Great. nervous that um, I, I have a work call that I should be getting right now, but Uh-oh. that's <laughs> this- okay. Welcome to Supply Chain. That's right. <laughs> hey, work does not stop uh, no, at any minute not. in this global environment we're in. So, Correct. But we're going to be effective, and, and we're going to expedite today's conversation and let you get back doing the good stuff you, you do Thank at you. White House and Shapiro. All right, so for starters, Melanie, tell us about yourself. You know, where, where okay. you're from? Sure. Give us a story from your upbringing. Right. So I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. That's where I am now. Um, Grew up here, and when I was 23, I went and lived in New York City, um, studied art history, worked in the art world. Uh, When the art market crashed, I went and worked for an art book distributor. Okay. So people were still buying art books. People were still interested in art, but couldn't afford art, Mm. buying art books. Um, Small little catalogs, museum catalogs, but then they published a book on models. Mm. And that book flew and became global. <laughs> Love <laughs> it. Book, so um, that book opened up a Japanese market, uh, which then um, opened us up to selling them other photography books. Mm-hmm. So I became, um, so I was a sales, I was in sales, but then I was in charge of exports to Japan, Germany, England, and Australia. Wow. So you've been, you've been in supply chain and, and some right. a very neat longer niche. than you know right i had no idea <laughs> so hey melanie real quick um yeah. tell it us what happens that way sometimes, by the way. <laughs> right. yes. what was your you know uh so do you still are you an art lover and if, if so, i still do love art yes what's your favorite and, part go ahead, what, sorry what's your favorite um type of art or artist or what i don't um i don't uh pigeonhole i I, I just love pretty things, um, but I am a snob about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. I love that, Melanie. I yeah. love that. All right. So we're going to sh- uh, shift gears here. Okay. Uh, and Valeria, we're curious about her journey, right? Yeah. Uh, Melanie, uh, tell us, please, about your role in your professional journey. Um, sure. Can you please tell us uh, how did you shape your worldview? So, so when I was in New York, um, so I worked in the, I would go to the warehouse, I would visit the warehouse, would work with the warehouse workers, um, saw the inventory, and then uh, the circumstances brought me to Baltimore, back to Baltimore, where I then became, I came to work at um, a warehouse, of, um, a warehouse that bought used books from mm. different 
Goodwill, Salvation Army's missions, Goodwill, uh, used books by the truckload. Mm. So I was, in, I was the logistics manager arranging all the trucks to their warehouse in Toledo, Ohio. Mm. So that started me off with working with, with charity suppliers. Mm. So, and seeing the important role that, um, that this offers to, that this money offers to them to have, to be able to maintain their programs and continue their soup kitchens and their food drives. Um, so, but it's also big, it's also a big, it's big money also yeah. um, at the end. So also uh, it seems like that was your, um, one of your first forays into recycled goods, right? And correct. Where, where, you know, just because the first owner of a book, you know, is done with it, many more folks could enjoy that same book, right? That's right. That's right. So, so right, to see the story of a, of a book travel. Mm. So then um, when I left that company, I went to work with White House and Shapiro because um, I was familiar with them because they were also buying books from our suppliers. Mm. And um, I went, when I started, Bill Shapiro was alive and working and he um, was leaving the organization. And he would always talk about, there's a book, um, Travels of a T-shirt. And it's about a T-shirt that was made in China mm. and it followed it around the world through the whole chain. Um, so when I started there, I was just doing um, over the road trucking. Still, so I worked with many of the same Goodwills and Salvation Armies and then sending them to warehouses in Houston and Miami. And then I grew up and grew in the organization and now I'm in charge of exports. So, and so you were managing uh, the shipping across over the road trucking, Correct. right? Okay. Right. And uh, now how long have you been at the organization? Seven and years now. Okay. And one last question before we turn over to Greg here, uh, um, Bill uh, Shapiro, I don't think is, is no longer with us, but he asked me found last August. Okay. And he founded the organization and, and that, that was a, it's a family organization. It was a family run business. It's, I believe, four generations now. Mm. Um, so it was his grandfather and his father were in the business. Mm. And now his nephew, Brian London, has taken over mm. and he's expanded it globally trifold. All right. Well, I appreciate wow. you, that clarification. So Greg, let's dive more into the organization. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about uh, what the company does. You shared a little bit with us, at least when you started, but it sounds like that's expanded quite a bit. Yes. So what are you up to? So, these so um, sadly, with with um, the pandemic right now, our our shipments to Chile, which is how I work with Vector, have, co have come to a halt right mm. now, mm. Um, which is terribly sad and horrible. Mm. Um, so we, at one point, a couple... Before the pandemic, we were doing maybe eight shipments a week with mm. Vector into Chile. So we, we supply all of their used clothing stores and their toy stores. We supply them with toy, used toys, clothing, um, accessories, belts and purses, um, bric-a-brac, which is all of your knickknacks that you have in your house. Right. <laughs> tchotchkes. <laughs> we, yeah. And tchotchkes go for, you know, and then it's all, we sell it all by the pound. Yeah. We buy it by the pound and sell it by the pound. Mm. Um, so have you so, rerouted, Melanie, have you rerouted some of these goods if you can't get them to Chile? Or are you holding on to them? We're or? holding on to a lot of goods right okay. now. Mm. Okay. Uh, Pakistan just opened up. Um, so, but they just take clothing. Okay. Um, and maybe some shoes. Um, we ship a lot to Nicaragua. We supply a, a thrift store chain there. Um, I'm trying to think where else. What we send to Pakistan, it usually goes, it may end up in Africa, but we don't, right now we're not currently shipping directly to Africa. Um, yeah, but one thing I, I forgot to say is that my father, and I had no intentions of following in his footsteps, he was an export manager as well. For really? Shapiro, for Shapiro and Sons, a different, oh company in Baltimore. Yeah. Wow. Who now I'm, who now I'm working with. <laughs> Through this, right? Yes, it's a, yeah. Yeah. It's a small world. 
Well, um, so you've shared with us kind of the run up to the show. Um, and it's interesting when you define a role or give it a title, how sometimes that's just a small portion of what's done. So tell us a little bit, we know you're the export manager, but tell us about what all you do. And you've shared a little bit of that with us on a day to day. Sure. Sure. So it's a lot of customer service. So when the suppliers call me, I have to, I have to know everything that the suppliers have to ship that week. Um, and then I work with my boss to figure out which, which customers we're going to send it to. Um, we're going to allot the loads. Um, then I reach out to the forwarder and I get my bookings. Then I set up the drayage. Um, then I do the invoicing. I get the invoicing and then I, I complete the loads. I'll, I'll submit the information back to the forwarder. And, um, but also there's customer service in between with the supplier and with the forwarder. Mm. Um, a lot of back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Melanie, way back when, I think it was my first role in manufacturing 15 years ago, uh, most of what I've managed kind of in a similar role that you had was all domestic. And then occasionally we had to ship stuff and get stuff across the border from Canada. And those were some of my longest days because of the, of the customs issues and some other things. Right. I can't imagine, especially with all the countries you're involved with, you know, all the problem solving and firefighting you probably do just to get stuff where it needs to go, right? Yeah. One of the biggest snafus that happened last year, um, had two bookings off by one number. One container was intended for Karachi and one was going to Chile and they got swapped. Oh no. And, and they ended up in, in, um, Dominican Republic, where they had to wait for many days until we could figure out how to divert them. Wow. So, and the, dry, the carrier felt horrible. We had to deduct the money. We deduct it from him. Um, it was ugly. It was bad <laughs> for a lot. And there was nothing I could, could have done. I couldn't have stopped it. Wow, man. Yeah. So I got a quick question that might help some of our folks who aren't as familiar with logistics and transportation so a couple things one if you could describe drayage for folks mm. and two um, share a little bit about how you and the folks at vector work together um, you know and how they help you through this process absolutely so drayage drayage is just inland trucking in an intermodal container um, from the shipper to the port so the Shipper has to get the, an empty container from the port and then return it back to the port. Got it. So with, with Valeria, also with Chile, which com complicates matters a little, is that all of the containers for certain items require fumigation. So oh. that's a real hassle <laughs> because <laughs> wow. you have to hold the container for several days in a yard. It takes 24 hours for fumigation. Certain, certain cities don't have fumigators. You have to find out how to get the fumigator there. Um, so Valerie, uh, so with Vector, we work, they set up the fumigation. Um, sometimes they'll set up. So there's a difference between port bookings and door bookings. Sometimes they'll do a door booking where they take care of all the shipping, all the all shipping the from the dock door. everything from dock to door, correct. Or sometimes I'll work with them and I'll do the, Ship, I'll do the drayage. I'll do the trucking. Got it. Um, so we're just constantly in touch with the deadlines too. When there's a port cut, and if you miss the port cut, and then the container sits there for days and accumulates to merge, and yeah. <laughs> so have, I have to ask this question now. Then, have you two ever actually met in person, Valeria? No, this is it. <laughs> no, this is the first time. That's that's incredible because you were talking about having texted and communicated with one another a lot of ways. So, wow, yeah. that's cool. I'm glad we got to do this. Then. Me too. We never Larry, even text each other. I'm impressed that y'all go, you go the extra mile and, and work with the, uh, the fumigators. I didn't realize that that was part of uh, the, the, the activities y'all get involved in. Yes, everything that goes to, to Chile that is used, it has to be fumigated. So 
we coordinate everything uh, to make this happen and it takes uh, 24 hours to be fumigated but well melanie also helped us a lot with this love it that's great well Larry, I know you, you all, you particularly, and everyone at Vector are big fans of, of White House and Shapiro. So tell us a little bit about, you know, why you wanted to share them with, you know, with the Logistics with Purpose series and what you see that's so special about what they're doing. Mm. Okay, yes, I think um, we choose Melanie because um, she's one of the biggest shippers that we work with. Um, we, we work together from different places, from Cleveland, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and they are always uh, shipping with us um, many containers. Sometimes, uh, actually, we move 10 containers per week. Um, she's always um, helping us with all the information. She's very nice. So I think that that is one of the most important things to work with someone that is uh, open to help, to work. It's easy for us uh, to work with someone like Melanie. So we admire him. We really uh, like to work with her, uh, with her company. Um, that's the reason. And it seems like there's a, there's a, a noble mission element, Melanie, yeah. to what you and your organization does, right? I mean, sure, because first off, starting with the supplier, when I said with the charity, we're helping them maintain their budget, improve their budget, get rid of the goods. It's, they're not ending up in the landfill, mm -hmm. which is key. Um, and then once, once it gets to the other countries, then it's helping their economy. We're helping them sell, their, sell goods. I mean, there's even stories of they would have parties in Africa when a, when a bale of clothing would arrive they would have a big party to auction and sell it all off wow that's powerful that i can that brings imagery to minds i mean that's the, the power of logistics the power of supply chain um so i appreciate what you do what um it's got to be really rewarding melanie i mean i mean to be a part of that and be able to make that happen and and get rid of the obstacles and the problems that get in the way of of those types of celebr i mean frankly celebrations uh, around the world uh, that's got to be a rewarding day. Um, yeah, it is. For the most part. <laughs> <laughs> well, and lots of headaches, I'm sure. There's lots of headaches as yeah. well, too. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, sure. So we're going to get, so Valeria, kind of beyond the world of logistics and kind of more about the global business, we're kind of curious about some of what's between Melanie's ears there, too, right? Valeria, we're going to uh, talk, ask, um, so, so Melanie, Valeria and I were talking kind of prior to the show, we, we love asking our guests, you know, kind of beyond more broadly, um, you know, what, what's an issue or a topic or a challenge or two, right, that, um, that you're really tracking more than others right now? Um, I think right now, because of the pandemic, it's really hard to see, to not know when it's going to, mm. when, when things are going to open up. Yep. Right now, I can't imagine how many containers are sitting in Chile not being unloaded. Mm. Lots. And no more are going, right? And now we've stopped, but then picking up in Pakistan, how many containers are already sitting there waiting to be unloaded? Mm. And then how long they're going to sit at the port to be unloaded? Um, for a while, there was a container shortage because containers weren't coming back from overseas. Yep. Um, that seems to have loosened up some. Um, I think just, just the question of what the world's gonna look like mm. next. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, visibility has been all the rage for years, right? In supply chain, across in the end supply chain. And what you described there, at least to me, Melanie, I think of, of the lack of certainty and the lack of visibility and uh, and that's just in current operations, right, where things right. are today. And then you apply that same level of uncertainty and lack of visibility to where we're headed. Um, there is a lot of concern and a lot, a lot of folks are, Absolutely. you know, trying to figure that out together. So, um, Valeria, what does that, um, you know, um, kind of hearing that and, and a, a, as you think about other customers or the industry, are you seeing a lot of that same, you know, uncertainty out there? 
Um, can you repeat, please? Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Valeria. Uncertainty, that, that general industry uncertainty, are you seeing that with other you know, customers that you, you work with? Yeah, totally. It's been like uh, one month ago that we are ha having some issues because of the pandemic. I'm in charge of all the experts going to uh, to Chile, uh, but there the, the virus is extremely um, bad. Mm. So right now our clients in Chile are asking to not ship anymore. So that's, of, of course, a, a problem that um, all the warehouses have the, the emergency there in hold so that's a big problem but we have to push more and to see where else we can ship and how we can help our clients of course of course we have to to call them to send emails uh to see if we can help in some way yeah appreciate but, that yeah. all right so greg as, as we start to, to wrap up the interview i know we want to make sure folks can get connected right yeah yeah melanie tell us a little bit about how folks can find White House and Shapiro or maybe even connect with you and um, um, so our website is www.webuyrags.com okay. uh, awesome. we also sell rags but webuyrags.com um, we're always looking for new suppliers um, and new buyers mm. so they can they can find me through webuyrags.com I'm right okay. there. I want to say something about uh, Vector. Sure. I, I did get the chance to meet Enrique. Enrique came to visit me one day, and their philosophy for their employees and their business um, model is fascinating. Mm. It's really great. Valerie, can you talk more about how you all have the, have the structure to do what you want and still work? Or <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's true. What it is a certain philosophy. Yep. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest values in Vector is to take care of people. So we are. Um, we really want to always um, help people. Uh, we are um, taking care of. Uh, give what we can give and what we have um also we are mm, helping to africa to ghana mm. uh vector is uh sending containers there we also in this moment that we are having the virus we are um importing from china a uh, mask mm. and test for the COVID. uh we are really committed to help people that's our biggest value always to help um also we are a company that we like to to be different uh we like to to prove that we are uh based on results we are a big team that we are uh, based in three different countries mm -hmm. chile usa and mexico um we are really committed to to show the results that we have we are um, happy to be here. Well, I'm totally happy. I'm proud to to be in Vector. Love that. And you know, uh, Melanie, one of the things you were alluding to, I believe, was the culture where they they do have a lot of latitude to to serve. You know, because this is a 24/7 you know type of industry we're in. Yeah. You know, having the latitude to contribute and and the freedom to to get the job done. Know, whatever it takes while enjoying as you heard there from valeria enjoying um the role and the company and and working with the customers so i think it is up to your point melanie it is a unique organization and of course right. as 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 this whole series is based on it's about changing the world and, and doing so where that's not lip service but you see it played out in the actions that's which is really important. yeah i well you know we see that in person all the time <laughs> Right, our first studio was in the Vector corporate office, so we got oh, wow. to see it all day long. And right. um, and we know Enrique from even before we were intimately involved with Vector and got to see the culture, and you can see that the culture comes from the kind of person that Enrique is, and clearly he's instilled that in everyone on the mm. team. Valeria just said it better than we can, um, better than Enrique does sometimes, uh, and. <laughs> 
So it, that's also a clear indicator of a strong culture is when everyone can communicate it. And that's one of the things we just really admire about it. They give with every single transaction, right? Every country has their specific uh, philanthropy that they give to for every shipment. So um, it, it, it's, you know, we, we kind of coined this phrase, give forward, right? Some people give back. They, they do their business first, and then when they get a chance, they give. This, this company, and much like yours, Melanie, give first. Yep. And, uh, you know, that's, this whole give forward concept is how we distinguish companies that do that. And yep. we're happy to be working with, with the folks at, at Vector. And obviously, it's great to meet you. We invite our audience, of course, to check out uh, Melanie York, Export Manager at White House and Shapiro, webuyrags.com. I love that simple mm -hmm. URL. I'm sure there's plenty of ways that, that uh, cup, uh, companies can, can uh, do business with and support the great work they're doing. Uh, based in, and the whole company is based in Baltimore. I know y'all do work internationally, but the company is based hey. in Baltimore. Just got a new warehouse in Hanover, Maryland. It's a huge warehouse. I don't know the square footage, but it's big. Outstanding. Very cool. Uh, well, a pleasure, Melanie, for you being on the show here today. I love your Thank story. Thank you for having me. You bet. Uh, and we're going to wrap up uh, here momentarily. But big thanks to Melanie York, Export Manager with White House and Shapiro. Big thanks. Signing off. What's that? Signing off. Oh, uh, signing off. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we're going to wrap up in just one minute. Uh, also, big thanks, of course, to Valeria Hernandez and the whole Vector Global Logistics team. I uh, love the good work they're doing. Greg, great show. A pleasure, yep. as always. Yeah. Uh, and great you great bet. To, great to meet you, Melanie. Thank you. Yeah, this was a great Logistics with Purpose series. Uh, to our audience, thanks for tuning in. Uh, as Greg shared, uh, you know, we encourage you to give forward, you know, seek out organizations like the ones right here that are that continue to do uh, incredible work in these challenging times we have and uh, check out uh, a variety of resources including podcasts live streams webinars you name it on similar content at supplychainnowradio.com and we will see you next time here at supply Chain now thanks everybody here thanks thanks